Welcome to our channel, ladies and gentlemen. Something is happening in this country that must worry you and I. Ever since Raila Mulu Dinga joined hands with William Samoy Ruto, there have been concerted efforts to ensure that William Ruto is sanitized by, by none other than Raila Mulu Dinga. And there is a choreographed plan which I believe has been managed well by the Deep State, Ruto Deep State, and the National Intelligence Service. Because they have been running a narrative around Raila Amolo Odinga, a feel good kind of uh, environment that makes even Raila's supporters very happy. But in the end, you will realize that you and I have been forgotten in this formation. It started, it started two days ago when Raila announced on his ex handle that PS Treasury Chris Kipto visited me at Capitol Hill Square. We discussed key issues affecting the economy. Not only that, he followed it by telling us that just, uh, just had a productive conversation with Ambisom's civilian chief of staff, Kojo Brew. Akwisi and Ambassador Valerie Rugene, Kenya's deputy heads of mission in Berlin. Excited about the potential for positive change on the African continent and an enhanced collaborations. Now, if you've noticed, Capitol Hill is now a beehive of activities. And it is not by accident. This is something that the NIS has planned and they want to, to achieve some political object, objectives. Now, this narrative around Raila, a feel-good narrative, is being driven by the media. And what makes it even suspicious is that even those people who have never praised Raila, those people who have always been against Raila, have now changed. There is a change of heart. And they are now praising Raila's Handshake with William Ruto. And I want you to, to lose, look at this headline. The headline on Saturday uh, was saying, Raila, new center of power. That is the headline. And then the explanation is, they call it political tourism. Opposition chief Raila Odinga has been a busy man. His recent rapprochement uh, with President William Ruto has once again made his Capitol Hill office a beehive of activity as politicians, civil servants, and business people come calling following the new realignments in the political arena. Politicians, civil servants, and businessmen are now sort of reporting to him. And if you discuss this with, 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 with Raila's uh, uh, followers, you will realize that they're very happy about this. Now, I told you what makes it even suspicious is the fact that there are people who are mainly Ruto allies. They've never supported Raila. Look at, for example, what Ahmed Nasir is saying, that Honorable Raila isn't just the new center of power. Look at that. To me, that, that is not real. Honor Braila isn't just the new center of power. He is the future center of power. He will decide probably in a date in 2026 where or whether or not President Ruto's government should come down tumbling to the ground. He will also decide whether President Ruto will serve two terms or not, or, 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 or just one term. Honorable Raila is that powerful. I mean, you can imagine that is Ahmed Nasir who is saying this. If you go through the, 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 the tweets that Ahmed Nasir have always posted about Raila, they have always been negative. But this change of heart where they are now praising Raila is something that should worry every Kenyan. And I want to give you the, the, the last tweet. That's it. This is from Okuru Okor. Those who have never been you know, President Raila, look at what they are seeing now. That dear Igiji and our deputy president, people won't tell you, but let me do it. The de facto deputy president of Kenya 
if not a co-president, is Jacom Raila Odinga. His man, John Badi, is about to take over the Kenyan treasury. The PS has gone to pledge loyalty. That is what Dr. Okuru Okot is saying. And one, you will realize that this post is meant to vex Rigiji because Rigiji is one person who has said that they are shareholders and he never wanted anybody who never who never voted for them to be given any political post in some of these cabinet posts. Now, Dr. Okuru Okot is reminding him that maybe right is a, is a co-president or a deputy president. But behind this, you know, kind of happy facade, if you dig deep, there is, there is something. And I want to tell you in this video why I'm worried about all these, you know, people showering Raila with praises. And if you look at it very carefully, ladies and gentlemen, you'll realize that this has been turned into a Ruto Rigadi war. That is how they want to make it look like. And it is about, this is, a, this is something that has been choreographed by the Deep State and the NIS. Because when it started, William Ruto told us that some people from, in fact, he said DP is at the center of, of, of a choreographed plan to sabotage his government. In fact, at some point he was telling us of a, a coup. You know that there are people, senior members, who are very close to Rigiji, who are being investigated. The other time, the NIS stormed uh, some, some, some senior staff of the DP apparently to go and record a statement. And it is the DP that they are targeting. So when this narrative was sold to Raila, Raila came in telling us that the country was about to collapse and, and they were helping William Ruto. Now they want to make it like it is a Ruto Raila, a Ruto Rigiji war. What do we have to do with them? These people are in office. They are being maintained by taxpayers' money. They are paid heavily. Their vehicles, their offices, their, their secretariat. The other day, they were looking for money to renovate their offices. So what have we got to do with their differences? We don't care and we don't want to know. So when Raila goes to this and we are told that it is about, because this is what they want it to look like, as Kenyans, we don't care. They need to work. They need to realize what they promised, you know, Kenyans. And I, I feel very bad about this. And at some point, I have always praised Raila going into government, but I'm having a second thought. Number three, this is a feel-good moment that is supposed to make Raila happy when, 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 when civil servants report to him, when now he's being called a powerhouse, Capitol Hill is becoming a beehive of activities. And when this is happening, Raila is human, and he is going to be happy, and it is going to forget about what we have always known him for. Picking for the downtrodden. Speaking for the weak, speaking for the minority. How, for example, is Raila going to criticize a government that now is part of? This is a replica of what happened when Raila had a handshake with Uhuru Kenyatta. He was blamed. He was part of the mess because any sitting government must always you know, have some weaknesses. Raila, for example, John Badi, I know, has been, has been uh, uh, given a clean bill of health. Or P and I and all those those four cabinet secretaries that came from ODM. How do you think Raila is going? Do you think Raila can criticize the way he had said that energy was rotten, that Churchill messed up that that docket? What about treasury? Do you think if there is a mess, ODM can criticize? What if a vote of no confidence comes to parliament against Badi, for example, that is corrupt? Do you think Raila will rally his support base to vote against Badi? So Raila, is, they, are, they, are, they want to make Raila feel good so that he forgets about the fight against corruption, the fight against tribalism, the fight against wastage. Do you think Raila will still give us uh, dosia, like he was telling us that in the government uh, G2G uh, uh, oil deal, People made a kill. There was a lot of corruption in it. Do you think he will? That is how we have lost it. And some people must take it up because Raila is in government and he has forgotten whatever he has done and Raila has nothing to lose. So we, whether we say he has betrayed us or not, this is not going to help. Moving forward, let people like Okeo Mutata, let Kenyans wake up.
and realize that Raila is no longer the man who was speaking about all this because they have formed an alliance with uh, with William Ruto. And this is meant to kill Gen Z's demonstrations because Raila's support base will be very happy to see civil servants reporting to Raila, you know, PSS and cabinet secretaries. They will tell you Raila is now the president. Raila is a co-president. And this is going, to, in fact, when you when you listen to people from Humba Bay Kisumu, um, Mombasa, and even Kakamega, they were saying from now onwards that there there we will we don't want to see any demonstrations. We don't want to see any protests. Raila still follows a very big, uh, uh, you know, so he has a very big support. And most of his supporters are now saying, let us stop these demonstrations. Let us now support William Ruto. And it is meant to kill. And if you've realized, the demonstrations are now losing momentum. I know they are saying that they're meeting on, 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 on 8th. I don't think it is going to be strong. Jesus are saying they are going to, to occupy CBD on, on 8th. It's not going to be strong because it has been neutralized. Sadly, though. And that is why when you see people visiting Raila, talk to any Raila supporters, they will tell you, Baba ni Baba, Sasa amechukua. And you know, Ruto has triggered memories. You know, Raila supporters now feel that his, his, his uh, uh, victory was stolen. And so when he's in Capitol Hill and these people are visiting him, they feel that now he's, he's gotten back his victory, which is not true. Raila is not the president. Is not the deputy president. And the, de the demonstrations, I think, are now gone. They are crafting a narrative that there is a formation that is coming and it is against Rigadi Geshagwa. In all this, ladies and gentlemen, how do you and I benefit? Nothing. We have been forgotten. It is about them. It is about a narrative, a feel-good narrative, to make Raila feel good, to make him forget about the fight. To make his people be very happy and forget about the continued fight against this regime. And so this time round, the NIS has gotten it. But Kenyans of goodwill will not allow it. Gen Z will not allow it. Now let me tell you, generations have got their moments. Raila had his moment. He's done enough. If he decides to hunt the boots or to end at the legacy like that, someone will simply take over. We have never had shortages of people who can pick up the good fight. And I know this time round, people will still have someone. Marco Ure, Babu Owino, Okio Mutata, Faith and I know people are there. And together, we shall overcome.